Hello. Today I want to address the important question of what social science students do after they graduate. I should emphasize that my comments are based on my experiences here in Thailand of running an English medium social science program in an international college attached to one of the main Bangkok universities, which I did for over 15 years. And I'm aware that our situation may not be universal. Job opportunities for our graduates, for example, may be quite different from those in other countries. Again, social science programs vary one from another. Nevertheless, I suspect that there may be certain common features and that some of what I have to say may be applicable elsewhere. First, let me make the obvious point that most social science degrees are non-vocational in nature. Some academic degree programs are directed towards a particular employment goal. Accountancy graduates become accountants. Travel and hospitality industry graduates work in the travel and hospitality industries and so on. Quite clearly, this is not the case with social science graduates, relatively few of whom go on to become historians, political scientists, sociologists, Southeast Asian studies experts, or whatever other subject area in the social sciences has caught their eye. Yet, in employment terms, I would argue that a social science degree can be a very good preparation for a large number of jobs. Certainly, that seems to have been the case with our own graduates. Important though the actual content of the courses a social science student has studied may be, what is even more important are the mental habits and study skills that the student should have acquired during his or her program of study. At the most basic, a social science student should learn how to think and critically consider the ideas, documents and information that they encounter in their lives. This is vital. And as I have noted in another video, critical thinking skills have become widely seen as essential for good jobs in advanced economies. Thus, the social sciences are diverse. Anthropology, psychology, economics and the rest are all quite different perspectives on the human world. And none of them offer a single unified body of knowledge. Controversy and complexity abound and an effective social science program will challenge its students to confront that complexity. Indeed, it must do this if it's going to be of value to its students. Only poor and ineffective teachers will simply teach from the textbook and not ask students to think about what they're learning. That can be very intimidating for some, but most of the social science students I meet over the years seem to learn how to cope with this diversity of ideas working out their own philosophies of the social world and, in the process, learning to critically consider alternative perspectives. As I have argued elsewhere, human beings naturally develop their own philosophies of life, but generally these are implicit and not reflected on, whereas a good social science program asks students to think and consider their own answers to important questions about at least the nature of society and ideally also about the nature of human beings. When they graduate, therefore, social science students should have the ability to engage in any area of work that requires them to think critically and to assess information. A second related quality which they should have acquired is the ability to read, summarize and digest a large amount of written material and the ability to present their judgments on this material in a thoughtful way. A third related quality, which I have certainly seen in a large number of my own students, is the ability to understand complex English and present ideas clearly in English. This is all the more noticeable because most of my students are not native English speakers and many have left high school with quite limited English language abilities and then have to struggle in their initial year or two at university to successfully master it. In our own region of Southeast Asia, of course, English language skills are enormously important, and those graduates who have gained the necessary language abilities are invariably advantaged in terms of jobs. But this is true in other areas of the world as well, particularly as more and more jobs are subject to globalization. None of these skills, the development of effective critical thinking, the ability to master and present effective summaries of large amounts of information, and good command of the English language, are easy to attain. 
Therefore, I suspect that there is a fourth factor which many of our most successful students and graduates display, and that is what is sometimes termed grit. That is the determination to persevere in the face of difficulties and to keep trying and trying again to overcome problems. Some of my students tell me that they are initially terrified of my classes because of my reputation as a demanding teacher who is quite willing to fail students. Yet I encounter over and over again students who have failed a course and then come back a second time and ace it. The reason for their initial lack of success was often because they were not used to thinking in English. It is one thing to take courses in English language and seem fluent, but that doesn't automatically enable non-native speakers to think about complex issues in the language that they're learning. The reason for their eventual success, however, lies in their own determination. Let me repeat that. The reason for their eventual success lies in their own determination. My contribution has simply been to set the students' achievable goals, which they can attain with hard work, and then to encourage them to realize their own potential. The frequency with which I have seen students gain this success through their own efforts is one of the rewards of teaching, of course. As to the actual post-college careers chosen by our graduates, we have never had the time or resources to make a comprehensive survey. However, Using Facebook groups and other informal means, the faculty have remained in contact with many of our former students, and for those, there is a great diversity of outcomes. This is not surprising. Students who do well in our social science program are not being trained for specific jobs, but rather are developing skills which can be applied across a wide range of jobs. Purely anecdotally, at a recent social science dinner attended by a number of our alumni, I did a quick survey and found that my dining companions included several individuals who worked in broadcasting, a couple of journalists, a trainee at one of the foreign embassies, a junior manager at a hotel, a visa coordinator, a lawyer, a part-time disc jockey, several people who worked as assistant managers and coordinators in companies, and a translator come interpreter. Over the years, we have also had a number of graduates who worked for non-governmental organizations, particularly with refugee agencies, the Thai Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the airline industry, both as pilots and cabin crew. We also have several who became school teachers and academics. Again, many of our more academic graduates have gone on to do master's degrees and doctorates, including at some very prestigious universities, Oxford, Cambridge, LSE and SOAS in London, Sciences Po in Paris, Geneva, Manchester, Harvard, and so on. I also note that our graduates were a very diverse bunch, as indeed they were when they were our students. Some are very academic, others not. Some found it easy to breeze through their studies with a steady raft of A grades, whilst others had to painfully struggle to pass and retake courses when they failed. Some of our graduates who have most impressed me are actually those who found their studies difficult, but eventually prevailed and went on to be very successful in their careers, including, I note, several in fields with a strong element of social idealism and service. I hope that some of what I've said may be of interest and value to students who are completing degrees in social science. Much depends upon you. Your degree should have helped you to develop certain general skills, which are relevant for a range of future employments. Which career you choose depends on your own interests and opportunities. It also depends on your own determination to work hard and succeed. There is no one path in life which social science graduates should take. Each should find his or her own way, following what I hope are their own ideals and interests, to find careers that are satisfying, enjoyable, and fulfilling. In conclusion, let me repeat that ideally social science graduates should have or should have developed critical thinking skills, the ability to understand, summarize, and evaluate complex material, good English language skills, and the qualities of grit and determination. Thank you for listening.